We're here today at Hubman Woodward, and thank you for hosting us today. On the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, thank them for hosting us today. To let people in our community, through our good friends in the media, know about some of the good things that are going on specifically in pharmaceutical that many of us have worked long and hard to bring to reality. A biotechnology sector bringing with it jobs of the future and new hope for sufferers from disease and ill health here at home and indeed the world over combined with the clinical component that provides optimal care. And we're not done yet. This is a success that we are still pursuing. But now we look how far we've come and we look at how the public sector and how the private sector have worked together and are working together to create a critical mass of talent and infrastructure and research and results to give that vision substance. Since I'm here now as a representative of the public sector, I want to do two things. The first is to point to the public investment that has helped to build essential educational and medical institutions like UB and Roswell Park Cancer Institute. And that public investment has brought them together here with the Hauptman Woodward Medical Research Institute in the New York State Center of Excellence in Bioinformatics and Life Sciences. Looking around this campus, this Buffalo Niagara Medical Corridor campus, you see the gleaming new buildings and they are daily reminders to us of the shining new knowledge that is being pursued inside. And from the very beginning, pharmaceutical companies have been partners and collaborators in this quest. A recent study that was based on data from 2006 found that statewide, biopharmaceutical companies were responsible for more than 130,000 jobs. $3.8 billion in wages, $121 million in total state tax revenues, we like that, and $845.6 million in federal and Social Security tax revenues. Here in Erie and Niagara counties, the 2006 figures were that more than 10,000 jobs, not just here on the medical campus, but also in places like North Tonawanda and Grand Island, were provided. $1.9 billion in economic input and $80 million in state and federal tax revenues. That is something to spread the word about, something to appreciate and something to celebrate. And most importantly, it is something for us to build upon. Here in Western New York, we will and we must continue to do the work of researching and translating that research into the creation and manufacture of life-saving drugs. And as we do that, we will and we must continue to do the work of growing our biotech sector, creating a more vibrant economy and generating many more high quality jobs. Life sciences is among the handful of industry sectors targeted by business and economic development groups here in the Buffalo Niagara region for focused state and federal attention and support. Thanks to our region's life sciences industry sector, now, we now stand at 130 companies and research institutions with over 6,500 employees. We can also identify nearly 1,500 scheduled, active, or completed clinical trials with a Buffalo Niagara connection. We don't want to just sustain this promising sector. We want to expand it, to expand its presence, the ex presence of biopharmaceutical innovation in Western New York, but the best is yet to come. After battling cancer twice, uh, uh, to be able to say that, you know, what worked for me, uh, it, was, it was definitely the medical, the medicine, the treatments, you know, which, uh, which I hated taking, uh, but it, it actually saved my life. Uh, it brought me back to life. When you look at the history of Western New York, you can see that this region has long been a leader in innovation. Whether you're talking about hydropower, manufacturing, or now bioinformatics, the Buffalo Niagara region is where, generation after generation, you find the cutting edge. And that is what is so exciting about being here today. 
Over the years, the fight against cancer has changed at the American Cancer Society. Just 30 years ago, people thought of cancer as a death sentence. Survival rates were lower and treatments were more limited. But now, it's a different story. Now there is hope. Today, we are looking at cancer as we never have before, as a chronic illness with a larger array of treatment options. Newer and better drugs that extend not only the length, but the quality of life for many patients. More than 9,000 people are diagnosed with cancer locally each year. The fight for their lives and the millions more across the nation dealing with cancer may well be forged right here by some of the researchers in this room. I'd like to applaud all of those businesses, community, and medical leaders here today. The promise of a brighter future begins with you, and you are helping us make strides against breast cancer. Thank you. <laughs>